more importantly than any of these things, we want to focus on the B. Think the bold law, B, do, achieve. If we aren't being powerful, then we won't do the activity. So then we don't achieve the results we desire. Jordan Freed, very powerful MAPS coach, his cadre and him developed this thing called state meter. Um, take a screenshot of this, save it on your phone. Um, we also are going to have it in the open source so you can print it out. This is going to be one of the most powerful tools in our arsenal in coaching moving forward. Um, first, let's start with what is a state? So Jim Quick, the author of Limitless, defined the word state as a snapshot of the mood of your mind and body. It is what you feel in this exact moment. All states typically break into roughly one of two categories, a blessed state and suffering states. Blessed states are the states that we ultimately desire, gratitude, joy, happiness. Suffering states are the ones we typically desire to avoid, anger, depression, frustration, right? Negative states. All states exist in one or two, blessed or suffering, and within each there are varying intensities. So that's, you'll see the energy, are they calm to charged? Um, Calm to charge, right? Think mildly frustrated. That's a calmer, a suffering state, or you might be in an all out rage, which is a very intense or charged state. That opposite is true for blessed, right? So if we, so let's take on the quality of our life. The quality of our life boils down to the quality of the states that we are regularly experiencing. Another way to say this is how you feel is your life. So what Jordan shared, this is through his experience, through coaching and what he's learned with Tony Robbins, is that most people only experience about 10 to 12 states consistently. As your coach, I want to know where do you live? So this week, you're going to print this off and you're just periodically going to ask yourself, hey, where do I feel? Circle it, dot it, whatever. We want to, again, it's typically 10 to 12 spot, uh, places where we uh, where we routinely live. We might have those highs or lows that aren't routine, but we're looking for where do we consistently live? So where are you at emotionally? Where's the snapshot of your mood consistently? Um, ask yourself, which of these states do I regularly consistently experience? So number one, figuring this out so that we can start to create a plan for you to move to the area of the state meter that you desire to live in if you aren't already there or Maybe you are, but how do we advance it so that you are in uh, more charged up blessed states, right? Think to, again, the classic bold, point far. Programming, lead, programming leads to our thoughts, which leads to our feelings, which leads to our actions, which leads to our results, which lead back to our programming. Programming the software of our mind is what is running the states that we regularly experience. The more we can be aware of where we are living, the more opportunity we have to reprogram, recondition you to live in the emotions that you ultimately desire, right? None of us desire to be a pissed off, unhappy millionaire, right? Right? To have all these resources, the world at our fingertips, and yet live in our entire lives in a suffering state of being miserable. Think about other countries. The U.S., well, I won't even get into that, but we, we have so many things at our, our fingertips and yet what state are we living in emotionally? So second, this is just an awareness tool that you're going to use in real time. If you're going to have a great life, you've got to master the mod, moment of decision. You got to master the mod, the moment of decision and to master your bod, which is your physical health, right? Um, so those are the two pieces. We learned from the seven habits of highly effective people that we worked on last quarter um, about this model um, called the, um, the proactive model. We have a stimulus and a response. In the middle, it is freedom to choose, right? So when you get a stimulus, you might look at it. Where am I living at right now? Take a minute, moment of decision, how am I going to react to this, right? Because like Gary says, first you make the choice and the choice makes you. Ultimate, that ultimately determines most of the decisions that we make. See, we aren't really taught that we're in control of the states we experience. In fact, most of us operate like the states that we experience are like colds. They are things you catch, not things you produce. That's not oh. actually...
I'm trying to take my class with me as I leave the house. Oh, perfect, thank you. Uh, so between stimulus and response, you have that freedom to choose. That's your greatest power. Um, so what does that look like in this? If you look at the ingredients of a state, it boils down to three things. Your physiology, meaning your body, right? Think of it as the language of your body, your focus, and the lang and language, which is the words that you're using to describe an experience. So when we look at physiology, all of us can describe what somebody looks like when they're in a depressed state, right? Physically, shoulders slump, their heads down, they're looking at the ground, shallow breathing. Harvard psychologist Amy Cuddy, and you guys might want to write this down, she did a TED talk um, called Presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E. -E -E. It's how you can use your body to drive your feelings. She also wrote, wrote a book on that. We have come to know it is much easier to act your way into feeling than to feel your way into action. So if you don't feel like doing something, do it anyways, then you'll feel like doing it, right? Now, the same is true when we look at like at a person we would consider blessed, a charge state, a person who is enthusiastic. How does a person who is enthusiastic use their body, right? Um, we can do the same thing. We can adopt the posture or body language of that desired faith, of that desired state. All right. Now, focus. The second thing, focus equals feeling. We've all had that experience, right, in traffic, four lanes of traffic, and you've got somebody, and I'll pay the money to KW Cares. You got some asshole whizzing in and out of traffic, right? And even by saying asshole, it's because I've made a determination about, right, about what they're now, would I still have called them that if I knew that they had an emergency, they were racing to get somewhere, or something had happened to them? No, right? So whatever you focus on is what you're going to feel. If we feel that person is a jerk, a jerk we might do things to slow them down. If we um, interpret it as an emergency, we may feel differently. Focus equals feeling. So ultimately what controls focus is the questions that we ask. That we habitually ask ourselves. Now the challenge is that most of us are not aware of the questions we're asking ourselves. So we've got to control this. We've got to look at the questions we're asking ourselves. Number three, we talked about um, uh, is our language. Language, there's an idea called transformational vocabulary. The words you use to describe an experience become the experience. So if you're walking around talking about everything's crazy, right? This is crazy, that's crazy, the market's crazy. Maybe substitute that word with amazing. I'm sure many of you have had me stop you when you I'm frustrated with something and we go, wait a minute, how do we rephrase it? I'm fascinated. The word creates the experience. Um, instead of saying, I'm so busy, say I'm productive, I'm taking territory. The words become the experience. Now, um, if that hasn't blown your mind enough yet, or if I haven't talked quite fast enough. <laughs> um, I really do want to make sure we get you on time. And yet this is really, I think, especially with everything going on for you to understand, we have control of that state. The past, present, and future only exist in language. That means the past, present, and future only exist in the internal conversations that we have about them in our head. So you can literally rewrite your memories, your feelings around an event, simply by changing the language. So those are all the ingredients that make up a state. So when you think about it, how do I use, how do I use this, right? How do I master the moment of the decision so that I make the decision that aligns with my vision, with becoming the person that I desire to become? Number one, you do your challenge. You're gonna print this off or take a photo, put it on your phone and just continue to ask yourself, what am I feeling? How am I feeling? Am I in a charge state? Becoming awareness, right? The first step to any great change is awareness. The second step, ownership. Ownership means that you are producing that state based on what you're focused on, what you're interpreting and how you're using your body.
the language that you're using in your head, right? So you aren't catching that state, right? Nobody sneezed and you got caught a cold. It's what you're focused on. So what we, again, may believe, you know, maybe we're taught that it's this external world driving our internal world. Actually, it's not. And think about that blame game. You blame others, your past, present. And yet ultimately, when we finish doing all that, we go to, well, it's really me. I'm to blame. Blame is not an effective strategy to change your life. It doesn't work. Um, so you have to take ownership over what you feel. If you own where you are today, you get to own where you're going to be. And then the last thing is practice. So if you are aware that we're in anger and we're doing that through the way we're using our body, we're doing that through what we're focusing on, the language we're using. Well, then the question becomes, what do I desire to feel? Maybe you desire to feel gratitude or joy. Okay. How does the person in gratitude or joy use their body? What do they focus on? right? Remember these questions control focus. So what are the top three things you're ultimately in gratitude for? Take a moment, write it down, take a moment to feel it. You'll notice that you start to shift. Um, the second use of this tool is to master the mod moment of decision to control how you feel, thus mastering the ability to make the effective decision that aligns with your vision. So you become the person you desire to be right. So, um, that's what you're going, that's kind of what we're going to be working on and working with together so that are we moving here or if we're here, are we moving here? Um, so how do we take control? We choose effective decisions. We manage our state in real time by looking at where we are and where do we intend to be. And then we use these ingredients to put ourselves in the states that we ultimately desire, the ones that serve us, that empower us to go out and serve the world to make it a better place. All right, so we've covered a ton. I've got three minutes <laughs> um, and I know it was fast. This won't be the last time you hear about it. And yet I wanted to get this to you. So um, who is taking on the challenge of using this tool this week to identify their states? If you will type your name in the chat box so that I know you're in. And then as you're uh, in the chat box, typing your names in, um, what questions do you have? Um, and now, uh, whether it's about this or if we, we can even go back and pick up Valerie's question, what, whatever. But what are the ahas or what are your thoughts around this as, we, as we're wrapping up today? I know I went fast, so I didn't go that fast. What you get? I'm I'm constantly in a blood state. <clears throat> like I, I wake up knowing it's gonna be a great day because the alternative is not waking up. So I'm constantly in the blood state. I, I liked the transformational language that you talked about. And and I'm gonna watch the TED talk. Perfect. Perfect. All right, who else? An aha thoughts around what we just looked at. I'm a big fan of the state meter. And I put in the um, chat, there's a book called Mind Over Mood that is very helpful. I think it should be required reading for everyone on the planet because um, it not only helps you identify why you react the way that you do, when you know why you're doing things, you, then you're able to make changes. Um, the other thing is that in real estate, understanding why your client is doing things so that you react appropriately, like it helps you identify what is the underlying issue. Like they're telling you one thing, but you can go, yeah, but that's not really the problem. This is the problem. Mm -hmm. And then they go, oh yeah, you can solve that for me. It's very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And realize it. And I love that <clears> you know, <throat> other people's state, somebody that can be in another state, we don't have to take on that that's our state or get triggered by it. Or if we do right. recognize, woo, right? Um, right. I just, if I was circling, that's that's an emotion I just felt, right? So how do I mm -hmm. go in and change these, um, these pieces? Um, yeah. Okay. And if you know why you're reacting that way, then you're, then you're able to change your reaction. Because if you don't know why you're reacting like that, you're gonna continue to react that way. That's right. 
Well, and, and then you get to even change it. Um, cause you know, a lot of times we focus on the why it is absolutely. There are some times we need to know the why. And sometimes we just go, you know what? I feel like this. I feel funky today. Let me, let me, ch- let me move my body, my physiology as somebody that is having a great day. It, it's amazing how something like that can, can transform, um, can transform your day. Cause it gives that responsibility, that ownership. Um, it's huge. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, uh, Luis, uh, you had a question. Would you recommend that book for tweens? Linda, is that something that? Yes, actually, the reason I know about this book is I have a child that is a genius and he went, he was accepted to Harvard when he was 16. So Harvard, AKA pressure cooker for overachievers. And they tell you during parent orientation that half of the students will be um, in the psychiatric, like they'll be in counseling by the end of the first semester. And they're right. And I looked at my child and was like, yeah, you're going to be one of them. Um, And it was the book that the um, counselor used to help them identify why are they reacting like they were? Because it it just created such huge anxiety because, you know, you're, when you, when you get into a pressure cooker situation like that, None of those people have ever failed at anything. Well, they, it, you know, and they don't, they don't know how to deal with what, and their, can, their idea of failure is a 99. Well, and how many, you know, when, how many of that you think about realtors, right? Exactly. We're in a pressure. Exactly. So it's, it's an amazing place for us to be. So this is the thing, because again, always my intent is always to begin on time and end on time. It is 1130 <clears throat> central. So this is where we're going to wrap. This is my time. Um, feel free though, reach out to me, text me, email, uh, whatever. Um, and then be ready, you know, next week when you come to calls, bring your state, have your state meters with you. And, re- and yes, I know it's kind of blurry on the screen that you're seeing. So um, we are going to email that out when we email out this recording. You can also find it. We're going to have it uploaded as a PDF in your open source. Um, you can get it from there as well. All right. Um, all right. That's where we're, that's our time. Have an amazing week. Um, weekend. We're out. <laughs>